Good morning, everybody. Thanks for uh, getting up early to come down and uh-oh, I'm hung up. Learn about mobile technology on the farm. My name is Dino Giacomazzi. I'm a uh, fourth generation dairy farmer out of Hanford, California. We uh, milk <clears throat> just around a thousand cows and farm 900 acres of um, double crop wheat and corn that we raise for silage and um, and we put up a little bit of earlage also and we grow alfalfa. We, we feed almost everything we grow and we, we sell a little bit of uh, feed to some neighboring dairies too. And <clears throat> my family started uh, milking cows and farming in the location that we're farming at today in 1893. My great grandfather came over from uh, Switzerland and purchased this land from the Southern Pacific Railroad Company. In fact, my family is the original private owners of the property. Before us, it was uh, unclaimed land. It was claimed by the railroad, and then we bought it from the, the railroad company. So we've got a long history of uh, farming and milking cows in California. Um, the reason why I kind of bring this up is to illustrate that, you know, sometimes you can teach an old dog new tricks, and so I'm going to show you some modern ways uh, that I use to farm my very old uh, family. Family farm. <clears throat> my uh, my milk barn was built in 1937, which is the year the Golden Gate Bridge was built. Um, and we're still milking in this barn today. This is a, a picture of the barn. We run a thousand cows twice a day through this uh, old flat barn, and this is my uh, dairy operation you see from above. And so <clears throat> that's a little bit about me. And before I start into uh, you know, showing you and demonstrating from the iPad uh, some of the apps that I use uh, in my daily routine on the farm. I want to um, ask you a couple questions, get to know what's happening here, and then tell you a little bit of a story. Um, I spent about 10 years of my life uh, not on the farm, and during that time I was living in San Francisco uh, developing software for the internet. And so I have a bit of a technical background. Uh, <clears throat> which is probably why I'm here talking to you today, but I, I don't want you to be intimidated by that fact because this is a, a situation where these types of new devices are so easy to use that technology has finally gotten to the point where technology has sort of gotten out of the way and now you can just get to doing the thing that you want to do. And <clears throat> so... Um, let me just poll the crowd real quick. How many of you guys, are, by a show of hands, are carrying an iPhone? How many of you got an iPhone? Okay, pretty good amount. How many of you have an Android phone? That's pretty good, pretty good Android numbers. Uh, how many of you have a Windows phone? I haven't got one yet. Microsoft is uh, stinking the place up. But um, okay, how many of you have an iPad? A lot. Okay, how many of you have a tablet that's something that's not made by Apple? like an Android tablet, so quite a bit. All right, so you guys are definitely my key demographic. So you guys know what these devices are. I'll just tell you a little bit about you know, how this came about. So in, in the 2000s, you know, early on when I was in San Francisco, um, writing software, I used to carry around a Palm Pilot in my left pocket, and in my right pocket, I carried a Motorola flip phone. You know, and uh, and at some point, um, Handspring, which was making a Palm Pilot-like device, decided to put those two things together and made the first kind of convergence device. And then in 2007, Apple put out the iPhone, and then Google put out the Android operating system shortly after, and now we have Samsung and lots of big companies making devices so everybody is now in the game of making these portable computing uh, devices and uh, so you guys know are uh, familiar with what tablets are and I want to just tell you one quick thing about the cloud because this is this seems to be a topic that that confuses some people and Apple has made it even more confusing by putting an eye in the front of it for no good reason but the Cloud just means that your data and the information that you're getting access to is, is living in a remote location and you have the ability to access that information from lots of different devices. Um, my, <clears throat> my lifestyle is kind of uh, fast paced, you know, with uh, 15 employees and kids and grandmothers living with me and all this kind of stuff and, and farming, milking cows, and so I'm moving around a lot and I have. Um, 
I have all these different devices. On the dairy, all my computers on the dairy are Windows-based computers. At my house and my laptop, they're all Macs. Um, I carry an iPad because I think the iPad is the best tablet, and I have a Samsung Android phone. So I'm constantly jumping between the four major platforms all day long. Wherever I'm at, I can get access to all my stuff, and that's because I'm using cloud-based um, applications, you know, like Gmail, for example. How many of you use Gmail? Good. If you're not using Gmail, you should be using Gmail. If you're still using Outlook, I would say it's time to make the leap, get off of Outlook, get on to G Gmail. You can use Gmail to manage your existing email address, even if it's your name at yourcompany.com. You can still get Gmail to do that. Gmail is the fastest way to do email. Gmail is a cloud-based application. And so <clears throat> I'm going to demonstrate some cloud-based applications. And every presentation requires a, a, a stupid cartoon, so here's mine. It says, I'm sorry, but I'm not allowed to sell you the smartphone without first verifying your IQ. And, and I find this sort of to be an ironic cartoon because my opinion is that smartphones are for stupid people. And that is why I am pretty much addicted and connected to my smartphone because I'm not very smart. And my phone makes up for deficiencies that I have in my own brain capacity. For example, I have the total inability to remember anything. So I use apps and, and these cloud-based things to keep track of all these things that I think are important that, uh, that I need, need to know. I, I've also discovered in my late years, I'm about to turn 45, so I'm already feeling a little Alzheimer's kind of coming in and, and um, <clears throat> a bit of dementia, and I find that my brain is completely filled up and that every new piece of information that I take in, something has to go to make room. So every time I come home and my wife is watching The Bachelor and I get stuck watching The Bachelor with her, The Bachelor junk information pushes out useful information. So I need to keep my, uh, I, my, my Android phone and my apps close by to make up. So there's that. So this is why we use these apps. So what makes these, what makes these smart devices, tablets and phones useful is their apps. It's the, it's the interaction with the application on the device that makes it so useful. So now I'm going to I'm going to take you guys through a little bit of a um, demonstration on how I use uh, many of these apps. One thing I want to say up front is that I'm not really, with one small exception, going to be demonstrating farm-specific applications because I figure you guys will figure out how to, uh, a way to find those apps. You'll. Um, You'll be able to, you know, everybody has a different situation. If you're using John Deere or Case or if you've got a precision planting 2020 seed sense monitor in your planter like I do, there's an iPad app for that. And, like, you know, so there's no reason for me to demonstrate those. So what I'm going to show today is um, consumer-oriented, off-the-shelf applications and how I use those every day uh, to manage my business. Okay, so... Um, the first thing I'll, I'll demonstrate here a bit is, um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of an idea. Of, okay, let, let me back up one more time. So I'm not selling anything. I'm not trying to really uh, uh, promote anything in particular. I'm just here having a conversation with you about how I do this. So at any time you've got a question or you want me to go a different direction with what I'm telling you, just jump in. Just yell it out, raise your hand, whatever. This is an informal uh, discussion between me and you. Just, you know, I'm here to help uh, just show you what I do and help you learn a little bit about this. So I try to run a, a paperless office uh, on the dairy. So I have a situation where my mother is my bookkeeper. She lives in a house, three houses over from my office, which is near the barn. And uh, I don't like walking back and forth all day long between my office at the barn and her house. So I've set up a situation where we do everything uh, paperless. So when bills come in, for example, my mother scans the bills in a piece of equipment called a, uh, and you might want to write this down, this is the only th thing where there's going to be a quiz. It's, it's, a, it's a scanner, a piece, of, a piece of equipment called a Fujitsu ScanSnap 1500. And I think I had a, uh, let's see here. I'm going, to, I'm going to just pull it up so you can see it right here. So this, this scanner is a really unbelievable piece of equipment because what this thing does 
It's, this is just an ad for it. I, I just want to show you where it is so you can see it. And this is not what they cost. They're about 425 bucks on Amazon. This Fujitsu Scan Snap Scanner, <clears throat> you can stick 50 pages of paper in this thing. It will scan both sides in color in less than a minute and they just boom fly through and so and it, and it scans them into PDF form it allows you to uh, it will also if you want uh, implement optical character recognition on your document so it will actually read what the document is and then it stores that information in the PDF and makes it searchable so if you wanted to go back later and search for all your bills from the John Deere uh, you know repairman all you got to do is search John Deere and it can show you all the all the documents so once once I've got everything scanned into um, into the computer in PDF form, then it, it, it automatically goes into an area of the computer, a special folder called Dropbox. And Dropbox is a cloud-based uh, syncing program that allows you to sync the files from uh, between your computers. How many of you are using Dropbox right now? Okay, so quite a bit of you. So this is a review for some, and I'll just so so Dropbox is, is one of the best, most useful things out there. So let, even even in the old days, if you're just using a laptop and carrying a laptop around with you, Dropbox is a great device. When I when I open a, a file, I'll give you an example. This is just an example of how me and my mother use it. She scans the documents. They come over here in PDF form. I don't know what this is going to be. It's kind of like roulette. Okay, so I've got a, a load of feed here from uh, South Valley Trading, and DPL stands for dried poultry litter. It's a protein product we feed to our heifers. So <clears throat> she, she scans all these. I go into my uh, computer at the dairy, and in my computer at the dairy, I have a program that came with my scanner that allows me to see all these files in big thumbnails, so I can actually look at them like a... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I can actually look at the files just like they're little you know, thumbnails and I can click on them and they get big and I look at the bills and I compare the bills to uh, invoices and make sure that we got what we're supposed to be getting and if we got what we're supposed to get and all the bills are fine then I take them and I drag them into another area like this box number four here called filed and then someday in the future I plan to actually file all those things you know but it will uh, this is how we run the filing system if I need to do something about it then I drag it into my box if I want my mom to do something with it I put it in her box if I want my farm manager Butch to do it then I put it in his box and then and then he is and then they are both synced and shared to this folder also so this anything that any change that I make in here automatically shows up uh, in their Dropbox and uh, any changes they make shows up in my Dropbox and, and they, one of the other great benefits of this program or this service is that it's backing up your critical data at the same time so because Dropbox is a cloud-based app everything I put in Dropbox lives on my computer physically in my computer it lives physically in my mother's computer it also lives in the cloud. So if my office was to burn down and my mother's house gets robbed at the same time and all the computers are gone, then I can just go get any other computer or I could take my iPad or Android phone or iPhone and I can get all my stuff back instantly. In fact, I have a, uh, a Windows computer at my house that has all of the critical applications that we use on the dairy, my, my cow program, my feed program, and, they, and I have full installs on that that computer and they are synced through Dropbox so every change that I make uh, at the dairy office is instantly updated at my house so if something happens to the computer at the dairy I drive to my house I pick the computer up I take it to the dairy I plug it in and we're going again you know and, and on a dairy where you're managing animals 24 hours a day uh, and and the record-keeping system is critical to your business we have to have that kind of uh, redundancy and uh, and protection so <clears throat> that's that's uh, some of the ways I use Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox can be shared from as little as one person. You know, you can use Dropbox just to back, keep your own files synced between you and all your devices. So in the field, for example, uh, I have, uh, if I'm my office, I can be... Um, going into a spreadsheet and putting down a plan of how I'm going to plant seed and where I'm going to plant and then I can come out here in the field and I can pull up you know this Excel spreadsheet and I can look at it right here in the uh, 
I don't know exactly what this is going on here, but you know, here's a quarter in 2012. You know, so I can look, I can look right here at what I'm planning to do. I can make changes right here uh, in the field from my phone or the iPad, and then I can uh, go back later to the dairy, and, and all that information is updated. So I also share that folder between me and my farm manager, so he can uh, see what's going on as well. We can we can discuss back and forth what we're doing with those files. Um, so that's, a, that's pretty much it about Dropbox. The, one other quick thing is that I have a, a group of people I went to a class with in Texas a couple weeks ago called the TPAP program, and we're sharing files between my classmates, and there are 94 of us sharing a Dropbox account, sharing one folder with lots of different stuff in it, 94 people. So Dropbox can be shared between one person, which is just you, sharing between your devices, or up to however many people you want. And in my case, I'm up to 94. So are there any questions about using Dropbox before I move on? Or paperless office? Yes. What do you think the future is of Dropbox? I mean, it's free, but is it... It's not free. Well. It's free up to two gigs. Wait a little bit. You'll, you'll be paid 100 bucks a year before you know it. I, I, I have signed, I had 20 gigs free in Dropbox because I had uh, signed so many people up. You know, I, I got all my friends on it. I got my family on it. I got, you know, whenever I'm writing articles and blogs on my website about it, people are clicking through and signing up and, and, and getting me all the free stuff, right? Like every time you get somebody to sign up, you get 500 megabytes of free space up to 20. So I got up to 20. I filled up my 20. And now I'm paying 100 bucks a year for the Dropbox. If it was 500 bucks a year, I'd pay it. It is it is it is worth that much to me. To the the security that I get uh, of backing this data up. You know, it's it's better than Carbonite or other remote backup. Uh, uh, software because it gives you instant access back to your stuff. You know, you, with the, like Carbonite. How many of you ever heard of Carbonite? You all listen to Rush, so you've heard of Carbonite, right? Rush uses Carbonite. So Carbonite is good because it gives you unlimited backup, so you can back your whole computer. So you can back a terabyte of junk that you don't need up to Carbonite. The problem is when your computer crashes, getting it back, you got to download a terabyte worth of stuff, which is going to take you a month. So they, so they set the set you out disks and it's you know it's a it's a way carbonite is a cheap way to store lots of data long term but it's not a good way to instantly access your stuff if you have problems so that's where the difference is and why I think Dropbox is a good program and and I think Dropbox has become um, a little bit ubiquitous you know they Apple's tried to take on Dropbox, Google's tried to take on Dropbox, Box.net is trying to take them on, and they everybody still seems to be on Dropbox. I don't think they're going to disappear. It's not bad. No. And if, and if Dropbox goes away, then you just switch the next day to somebody else. It's the same, you know. It, it, it isn't... Uh, it isn't like uh, you're going to lose all your stuff because all your stuff is still already on your drive. That, that's the other benefit of Dropbox versus uh, Carbonite. If Carbonite was to shut down for whatever reason, all your stuff is there and you might not get it back because it's just there. If you, um, It's just there and on one machine, but with Dropbox, you've got it spread out a lot between a bunch of different computers, so you're, you're backed up a little, little more redundancy. Any other questions before I move on about paperless office, scanning, Dropbox? Okay, so another very useful program that I use is Evernote. Evernote uh, is an application that allows you to remember uh, everything. It, it, is a, it is a notebook pro program with very powerful features in that um, not only can you categorize notes, uh, put notes, tag notes with different things so that they're easy to search for, but you can store just about anything in uh, Evernote. So you can store text, mess text you, know, you can type into it, you can record audio into it, uh, um, I'll just give you an example here. Um, let's go to here and travel. Okay, so you can store pictures in it. You can record your voice and store no voice notes in it. And you can also forward emails to it, which is a, which is a very useful feature. I use this quite a bit. Um, this particular folder that I have in Dropbox is where I store and keep together all of the stuff when I'm traveling. So for for example, I'm traveling today because I'm in Chicago and I'm not in Hanford, so I have some information here, like the top producer uh, email that they sent me uh, as a 
speaker. They sent me some you know, information that I needed to know, and then they sent me the uh, the agendas. So every time I've, I've wanted to know what's going on here today, instead of carrying around that uh, that book that they give you, I just go over here to this spreadsheet and I look, you know, and see what's going on and when I'm supposed to be doing something, or you know, if there's somebody else that I want to see. So this is a uh, and all I did was when that when that thing came to me in the email. I forwarded it. That's hard to say. Forwarded, forwarded it. I forwarded it to my Evernote account. When you when you sign up for Evernote, it gives you a special Evernote email address that only you know. It's kind of like your name at with a bunch of junk added onto it at Evernote.com, and and then it gives you also the ability to tag and file that note in the subject line of the email. So, for example, when this email came to me, I hit forward in my Gmail, and then I put a little at sign and travel, and it sent it to Evernote, stuck it right here in my travel folder, already ready to go. It knew, it knew where to go. Uh, the other thing I do is I, I will take, like if I'm expensing a trip, uh, like this one, for example, uh, if I, I keep all my bills and stuff in here, you know, all of the receipts and things. You just, I just take a picture, and, uh, and I got to figure this one out because it says on the paper that internet is free, right? Well, and then here they got me a seventy-dollar bill for using internet for three days, but I got to figure that one out. So, you know, and then you meet people along the way, and I, I lose. Who loses every business card they ever collect? Yeah, okay, so I don't have that problem anymore. I just take the business card and I take a picture of the business card and I stick it in my Evernote and now I remember I go back to this particular uh, event and I see the business card of the people that I, I met and then I can stick that information in. There's actually, I think, a way on the iPhone, I don't have the iPhone, where you can take a picture of the card and it automatically puts their information into your address book, right? She's shaking her head. So that's even better. You, Evernote will take the, the card and stick it and there's there's other apps that do that too. You just take a picture of the card. It figures out which is the phone number, which is the email address, and and then it, and then you can kind of adjust it and save it right to your address, your contacts. So that's a really cool feature. Um, you know, other things that I've done with Evernote, uh, I'm using it to, I'm hiring a, uh, uh, an office manager right now, so every person that has sent me a, a resume, um, I have forwarded all the resumes to this bookkeeper folder. Uh, whenever I've had an opportunity to interview somebody, I, um, I go in and I type the notes uh, from the interview right into a page that contains their resume and whatever message they sent to me. Uh, I take their picture and attach their picture to the to the, the note so that later I can remember who they were and uh, and then it helps me kind of sort out what's going on with that particular project that I'm working on uh, any, anytime I have a project for like construction uh, or something on the dairy or I'm building something or doing something that requires me to do research I collect all that information put it together in one folder I go back to it I also use this to manage uh, equipment all of my equipment um, any any piece of equipment that I have a, a service manual for or some kind of a document that I've been able to find online by searching uh, you know for a PDF version of it for example we, we, we have about seven Kubota tractors that we use on the dairy all those Kubotas I have a PDF uh, service manual for I have those attached to a file uh, a, a note for each tractor. I, I've, I've, I have parts lists in there, so I have like like Wix equivalent filter numbers for all of uh, my Kubotas and case tractors. Anyone case tractors? Case tractors? No. John Deere tractors? Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, so I've got these. So when I'm in town and and I remember I need to get filters for my MX255, I can just go to my MX255 uh, full uh, note, open it up, see what the numbers are, tell the guy this is the number I want, and I go. I, I use it also too sometimes for taking pictures of stuff. You know, if I if I um, I'll show you an example here. I needed a I needed a bucket for a loader. There's a there's a program that comes with Evernote called Sketch that allows you to sketch over the top of photos. And uh, and I was on the phone with this guy at the Cat Junkyard in Fresno, and I needed a bucket for this loader. And he's like, okay, describe the style, tell me the measurements. I'm like, hold on, I'll go I'll go get something. I'll email it to you. So I went out here and I took a picture of this with my phone. I went and measured it, and then I actually I just sketched this on here. This took me about 15 seconds to do. And then I forwarded this to the guy at the CAD dealership. 
And he calls me back five minutes later. He's like, I've got one just like this out in the back. Come and get it. So this is... Uh, this is one way of doing that. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's just other things like, uh, you know, here's another example of using that sort of stuff. I, I had an engine, a diesel engine pumping water that was that blew up, and so I had to get some information off this engine. And uh, here I needed to know the bolt pattern of the of the PTO. I got a picture of that. I needed to see what was information was on the gearhead. You know, and in the past I would go up to this gearhead and I would re take this information off the plate. And uh, I'd write it on a piece of paper that I would find on the floor of my truck somewhere. I'd write it down. I'd put it on the dash. I'd drive down the road with the windows open. The paper would fly out. I'd go back. I'd get another piece of paper, write it down again, and then I'd lose it again before I would need it. And then I'd have to go back. So now, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, I think it's worth a thousand words plus about 25 miles worth of driving. And so, you know, I could get right here the numbers right off this plate just with a picture. So these are just, you know, some of the ways that Evernote is useful to me on the farm. There are thousands of other ways to use it. Uh, it is a very valuable and free program. Uh, if you want to do more uh, advanced stuff like share notes with people or have it sync to the cloud every you know, minute instead of once a day, then you pay 50 bucks a year for it, which, which I do, and I, I think it's saved me money. So any, uh, any questions about Evernote before I move on to Remember the Milk? Okay. Yes. Um, all this information you're sharing with us, I mean, it's almost, it's, it's just so new. How, how do you learn or how can people like yourself learn about this technology? <clears throat> That's a good question. Dropbox is a great tutorial online, you can understand. Yeah. But I think your question is about how do you find out this stuff exists, right? Like, how do you how do you know that you want to do these things? Well, um, I wasn't born with a computer. Yep. You know, and I don't think you have to be born with technology or or have uh, knowledge about technology. I think that the thing that has worked for me is that I'm a I'm a solutions oriented person. Like I'm always looking for a way to solve a problem. So once I got into having a, a smartphone, I started thinking about every problem that I had and is there a way to solve this problem using an app? You know, and I still do this constantly. You know, like I go to the I landed in Chicago at the airport and I'm like, I gotta get to the hotel. Is there a solution for this problem of how to get there? So I go through my app store and I look for a Chicago transportation system, you know, app to see if it's going to show me, you know, what time the trains come and how much they cost and how to get there and all that kind of thing. You know, Google Maps actually does all that for you, so I didn't really need this in this particular case. Google Maps tells you what time the train comes, how much it costs, where to get off, and it actually navigates you step by step how to get there. And um, so it's really just having a curiosity about it and, and thinking about all this stuff. And then you can just go to the App Store, you know, the App Store or the Android market, and you just ask it questions. You know, you say, I, you know, put in, uh, I'm looking for GPS stuff. You know, just yesterday I got a, a piece of, a, somebody hit me to a piece of a, an app, this thing called GPS Log. This is the first time I even opened it. You know, someone just told me that this, this thing allows you to go out and take a picture of something, and it, and it, and it marks that spot on a GPS. GPS and you can keep notes about it and they use this for scouting uh, cornfields. So they go out and they see a problem, they take a picture of the problem, they type notes about the problem and then they go and if they want to come back to that same spot, the app drives them back to it. You know, you can walk right back to the spot that you took the uh, picture. So, you know, this is a, a new thing that I haven't tried yet, but it's the same idea. You know, somebody told me, you know, I also read a lot of Blogs, you know, like Mashable and 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 Gadget, and there's there's there are guys people out there who who uh, who put this stuff out all day long, reviewing apps, and you know, or you can go to my website where I review apps that I use all the time. You know, if I find an app that I like and I think farmers can use it, I post a I post a message. Here's an app, how I use it. I like this thing, and if you you know, you might you might like it too. So, any other questions? Okay, remember the milk is a task management program. So sort of like uh, 
the iPhone has a thing that Siri does for you where you say, you know, reminders, right? It's like, remind me to do this, remind me to do that. It puts in, uh, it puts in things for you to do. Uh, Remember the Milk is, is a lot more advanced than that, uh, partly because it's cloud-based and you can, you can manage this on, your, on the web as well as on your devices. So how I use this program is each morning when I uh, show up to the dairy, I, I first meet with my uh, managers to see what's going on, and then I go on a walk around the dairy, and then I drive around the farm, and I look for things that need to be done, and as I'm going along, I either type in a, uh, a thing to do, you know, a task, or I'll speak it into the phone, and it adds it on, and then I go back to my office, and then I, and then I categorize and prioritize each of these things to do, and then I assign them to people that need to do them. So if I need to do it, it stays on my list. If someone else needs to do it, I send it to their list. So my, my herdsman, my herd manager will get a list of things. My farm manager will get a list of things. I'll have a list of things. My mother gets a list of things, and then she doesn't do them, and then I have to do them. So <laughs> this is uh, what's, what's nice about this program, too, is that it allows you to, to look at your things to do in many different ways. You can, you can look at it by date, so I can see what i got to do tomorrow. I can see what i got to do this week. Week, what I got to do on Monday. Um, I could look at it by tag. So this is kind of like a category. So for example, if I come down here to my office category, whenever I'm in the office, I look, uh, I look at this list and it shows me things that I got to do while I'm in there. And then it, it does it by, by date. And I can also look at things by priority. There, there's a location feature and this is kind of fun. It, <clears throat> I don't have it. Well, you see this one that says OSH. Okay, so Osh is Orchard Supply Hardware. It's a it's a big hardware store chain in California, and uh, I go to Osh, you know, three times a week to pick stuff up for the, the dairy that I need. The the GPS on my phone knows when I'm in Osh. When I'm as soon as I walk through the door, my phone beeps. It pops up a list and says, "You're in Osh. Here's what you need," and it gives me the list of things that I have to pick up while I'm there. Uh, you know, it also does it by town. So Tulare is a town that is about 30 miles away from me and where most of the tractor dealerships are. So, you know, all week, I only go to Tulare maybe once or a week or once every two weeks. So I just keep compiling lists of things I need when I'm in Tulare. As soon as I hit the Tulare city limits, my phone beeps and says, you're in Tulare, go to these places and get this stuff. See, another way of making up for my deficiency because I cannot remember what I'm supposed to get, when I'm supposed to do it. So the... Uh, the phone does it for me. So you've got these really interesting, fun ways to do it. Any other questions about that one? Yeah, that one. Remember the milk. Yes. It's, it's RTM. Remember the milk. It's free. Uh, also, if you want to uh, use it just on the web or if you want to use it on your phone and sync it once a day, if you want it to sync more than that, it's, it's pay. I think it's 20 bucks a year or something. It's also very cheap, um, worth using. I mean, I, I use the thing constantly. You know, I, 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 in the morning when I make my list and then I sort my list out, sometimes I sort my list the night before I go to bed and I already know for the next day what I want to do. And as I go through my day, I just pull the app up, I check off the things I, I finish. Finish and I keep going. So it's directing me all day what to do. You have RTM on your cell phone? Yes. IPad. On my phone and my iPad and on the desktop just in the web browser. So Evernote has an actual desktop app, but I don't use it. I just use the web browser version and I use the iPad and the Android version. And uh, remember, the Milk also has that. So is that what you use instead of Outlook for like business? Yes. I don't use Outlook. I haven't used Outlook since 1997. I've been using only Google apps since that time. I switched to Gmail. I got rid of Outlook. I would highly recommend getting rid of Outlook unless you're unless you're um, unless you're printing a lot of labels and using Outlook. Leave your addresses in Outlook for printing labels, but other, otherwise, get rid of it because you know you, you're. <clears throat> If you're, you're now mobile, you don't need to be tied to this desk. And, and an Outlook is a one machine, one person. I got a vet check this morning. Um, Outlook is a one machine, one person application. And that's not how the world works anymore. That's not how you work. You're a farmer. You're outside, out in the field. And, that, and that's why I think this stuff is so relevant to this group of people because you are not office people. And because this iPad was invented, thank you, Steve, 
This makes gives us access to the same technology and the same conveniences as, as the city slickers, but we can do it in the, on the farm. And, and I would also argue that you guys are more technologically advanced than your counterparts in the city because you guys are out there running uh, satellite GPS RTK systems in your tractors. You're doing variable rate uh, applications. You're using satellite imagery. You're you're writing scripts for you know this variable rate planting, variable rate spraying. I mean, this is really high tech stuff, you know. And, and so if you're already doing that kind of stuff, I mean, this is easy. This is really easy compared to that. So quickly on the calendars, okay? Everybody has a calendar. I just wanted to um, give you an idea. This is Apple's calendar program that's in the iPad, but I don't use Apple to ma manage my calendar. I use Google. And the reason I use Google is because it's web-based also, another cloud-based app, and it allows me to look at a whole bunch of different calendars uh, anytime I want. So here's a list of calendars that I currently have. Okay, and, and this isn't my full list because I'm, I have calendars that people have shared to me, and for some reason in the Apple app in this iPad, I can't see calendars people have shared to me. It's limitation. I need a third party app to make that work, but I intended to do this whole presentation from my phone. I was I had a cable to plug my phone in, but it broke, and now it worked at home. It didn't work here, so I had to switch to the iPad. So I apologize about that. I could have demonstrated better, but let's just look here real quick. So here we've got this this one that says Dino up here. This is my, uh, my schedule of things to do. So this is what I got to do every day. Uh, this is the one that I look at all the time. I also have a calendar, excuse me, so this is just me, my stuff to do, there's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is just me, my appointments, okay, um, if I want to, uh, I also have normally my wife's calendar, who we are synced to each other. Our calendars are shared. So her calendar and my son's calendar. So my son has his own calendar and all of his things that he's got to do, wherever he's got to be, doctor appointments and practices and stuff are on his calendar. So I, I can see at any time what she's doing, what he's doing, and how it conflicts with what I'm doing. And I can plan that way. I can also look at things like my... my uh, my farm labors, uh, let me try to find it here, their, their days off. So here's, here's an example of the days off. This calendar is just days off for my milker. So uh, once a quarter, I print these calendars that show the milkers days off. The, the milkers are working, you know, six days a week, uh, 24 hours a day, you know, we have seven milkers that work in this very complicated system of rotating weekends and stuff. It's all programmed. It, the calendar dictates forever what their days off are going to be based on a formula that I developed ten years ago that we've been on this entire time. And they love it because they know every weekend they get off, they know every Thursday and Friday they get off, they know every Monday and Tuesday they get off where they can go down to the flea market and all this kind of stuff. So I print these for them. My my outside guys, which are the guys that are taking care of the cows for cat feed cow feeder, herdsman, assistant herdsman, these guys, they have a different calendar. So this is how we schedule that. I also have a, a farm schedule where we... Um we do things like I'll sit there and project out dates of what I want to do, harvest dates, uh, planting dates, things of that nature, spraying, and then um, and then it, all of the dates in the future are projections. All of the dates in the past are a record of history. So if I say on January 31st I want to spray, uh, you know, wheat for you know, herbicide on wheat, and we don't do it till the first. On the first we we put the actual date, and on the second I know that the first is when we did it. So we use this calendar to go back and look at what's happening. Um, this PDF notes thing, I just wanted to give a quick example. This is a, there are many applications that do this. No, I don't. Uh, this is just a way to, um, I sign almost every document that I get on my iPad or my phone. I hardly ever sign paper anymore. Anything that somebody wants me to sign, I have them email it to me. I open it up in my iPad uh, or my phone. I come in here and I just scribble my uh, signature on it. I do, you know, oops, I do a little thing here and I, I flatten the image and I send it back to them as a PDF. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you a quick little story about this. Um, last year, I was being sued by PETA. 
uh, for appearing in an ad in California that, that where I claimed that I care for my animals. Okay, so PETA was suing me and the uh, California Milk Advisory Board over false advertising because obviously I tortured my animals so I can't claim that I uh, take care of them. And so the lawyer who was uh, uh, representing me on this case needed me to sign a document. And I was I happened to be in San Diego at the time at SeaWorld with my son and my wife and uh, and I go, sure, email me, email me a scan of this document, I'll sign it, send it back. So he emails it to me and in the parking lot of SeaWorld, I signed it on my phone, sent it back to him. Two hours later he delivers the document to the court in Sacramento. That afternoon uh, the, the judge threw the case out and we beat uh, PETA. So thank you for uh, we're at 10, 15 minutes? Okay. So that's just another, another nice little app. Um, TeamViewer is a very useful little device. Uh, TeamViewer is a, is a piece of uh, uh, software that allows you to control a computer from a remote location. So right now I'm dialing into my dairy computer, which you can see there. It says dairy, and there's a nice little cow on the front. So... If I wanted to uh, get into this computer, I can just type in my password here, which is cow. If you guys want to come and look at my dairy computer, you're welcome to. Um, it just keeps the uh, salesman out of it. The uh, <clears throat> So here's my desktop at the dairy. You know, here's my cow program that we use for tracking the cows. And I can go over here and, and type in a command and put like... Uh, Pins, you know, and then I could. There's a list, you know. Here's a little list of you know how many cows we've got in each pen right now. You know, this is just. So if I, you know, just a couple uh, night before last, I got a, uh, I had a uh, print a list for my. Uh, actually, it was last night. I had to print a list for my herdsman uh, for the vet check that's happening right now this morning at the dairy, and the uh, he was he was out with the flu, so I dialed in printed a list, called another one of my guys and said, go pick up the list that's in the printer. And, uh, and that was, you know, easy enough. I also, all of my sisters, my mother, and half of my friends have this team viewer program on their computers because I'm so tired of them calling me uh, saying, how can I fix this problem? Now I just say, get out of the way. Let me fix it for you. And I fix it and I go on with what I'm doing. So I just dial into their computers, fix their problem, and then go. So team viewer is another free application. You have to install it on your computer. Computer. Yep. Uh, so, VNC versus Team Viewer. Team Viewer is a VNC. It's just a branded VNC. It's just a free, easy version of a VNC. Of you yeah. It's just a free VNC. It's virtual network computer is what VNC stands for, and VNC just means that you can remotely connect to a computer and take it over just as you were sitting at it. You know, I, I find a lot of benefit to this. I, I, I screwed up my mom's QuickBooks one time in Dropbox. Don't put QuickBooks in Dropbox unless you're the only person that does QuickBooks. Because if you open it and someone else opens it and you both save it at different times, it splits the file into two and it screws everything up. So don't use QuickBooks in Dropbox unless you're the only one that ever opens it. And then make sure you close it before, every time you leave it before you open it again. I would put the QuickBooks file in Dropbox so you have the backup. Just don't open it from another computer unless you unless you know what you're doing. Ask my mom. She she is furious because I screwed up her QuickBooks. Um, where was I going next? Okay, I know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do a little bit of a um, uh, thing on how I calibrate sprayers with my cell phone. And then we're going to have questions, and if there's no questions, then I'll show more stuff. Okay? So um, I have a 40-foot uh, boom sprayer. I only farm 550 acres of corn and wheat rotation and another 500 acres of alfalfa, 450 thereabout. So I don't have, you know, big, big equipment in California. We can't move it around our roads anyway. But uh, So i got this 40-foot boom sprayer. Three point hooks up behind a tractor with 600 gallons, 300 on the nose and 300 on the on the uh, three point. And um, so whenever I get ready to go out and spray with this thing, I open up my little T-Jet uh, app. How many of you already have the T-Jet app? 
Good. Okay. Very useful little piece of equipment. So I go to the TZ app and I first plug in my parameter. So uh, uh, I want to go six and a half miles an hour. I have 20 inch nozzle spacing here because I'm, I'm spraying across the uh, broadcasting it. Uh, I want to put out 15 gallons per acre in this application and I'm not using fertilizer. I'm just using water. If I were to click yes on this, then it later will give me an option to change the specific gravity of the, of the liquid. So if I'm running UN32 and I'm setting this up as a, a fertilizer uh, application, then I would change the viscosity of the liquid this way. But here today I'm just using uh, water and uh, a little bit of other herbicide. So shark and axial and something else. So, uh, all right, so now I've got to pick my nozzle. So I use these little blue um, air induction nozzles because uh, it's usually windy when we're spraying. It's winter time. And um, so it's telling me here that i got to uh, set this thing at a rate at 0.33 gallons per minute per nozzle is what that number right there shows. And then I go to the next page and it shows me that at 6.5 miles an hour I need to run at 48 psi. Okay, so I got the information that I need. I got to go 48 psi and I want 0.33 GPM at the nozzle. So now I got to go out and calibrate to make sure that's what I'm getting. So we go in the tractor and you set the uh, the pump going and you get the thing spraying and you set it up at 48. Now I get a little measuring cup and I go behind the uh, the tractor and first I got to figure out how many ounces per minute uh, 33 gallons per minute is. So I go in here and I say okay 128 ounces in a gallon. By the way my phone has a conversion calculator in it so I just usually use the conversion which is really fast. So 128 ounces times 0.33 what did I just do? 128 times 0.33 equals 42.24, so I need 42 and a quarter ounces per minute. But I don't want to sit there and spray this stuff on the ground for a minute, so I'm going to divide this by four, and I'm going to go, okay, 10 and a half. So I'm looking for 10 and a half ounces in 15 seconds. So now I switch from this, and I go to my clock, which is a built-in feature of the Android and the iPhone, and I clear this off, and I hit start, and I count 15 seconds of spray going into my uh, little cup, okay? Now I get to 15 seconds. Everything is calibrated right. I know the, the, the nozzles are good and I don't have to replace the nozzles. The last thing I do is I have to level my, my three-point sprayer so it's not cocked forward or backwards. So I go over here to my little clinometer level and I can lay this across it and it tells me when I'm level. And if my sprayer is level, then I hit the, I hit the road and start spraying. I've also leveled a pool table with this too doing this thing right here. So those are, uh, that's a, that's a two-minute uh, demonstration of the one minute it usually takes me to uh, calibrate a sprayer. So I have, uh, you know, 20 different things I do on the farm uh, that I use this in the same way, you know, and I, and I usually am doing this with my phone. I'm not carrying my iPad out there in the field. In fact, since I got this Samsung Galaxy S3, which has a big fat screen, I hardly use my iPad at all. I can do almost, I can see it better and it's easier for me to type. I use this most of the time. I mostly use my iPad for playing games against my five-year-old son who beats me every single time. Okay, how much time do we have now? Anyway, yep, doesn't matter. Let's go until he tells us to stop. So, <clears throat> any questions about anything I've talked about so far? Or, go ahead. That's uh, so on your iPad yet? Yes. Um, okay, the best way to do that is to use an app called uh, Quick Office. So I will first uh, prerequisite by saying this that there is no good way to do Excel on an iPad. They all suck. The the uh, the actually the best way to do it is with Apple's numbers. App. It's the best spreadsheet program, but once you get it into numbers, you can't get it back to Excel unless you export it out and email it back to yourself, which is just a pain in the butt. And so I use, um, so the way I do Excel is um, mostly I just, um, okay, how do I, I get through it? I, I, I do all the building of spreadsheets. There we go, close this. I build the spreadsheets on the um, 
on the desktop and, and you kind of got to learn to simplify your spreadsheet some for mobile because if you have a lot of macros or a lot of you know uh, formulas that change colors and stuff like that, none of that works. So you got to keep it uh, you got to keep it pretty simple. Most of you are probably making simple ones. So from Quick Office, I go in here to my Dropbox. Um, my Dropbox account is connected to Quick Office. I can go over here and uh, and look at my farm plan. I can open this up and it and it opens it up right here in a spreadsheet form and then I can look at it. And so what, what this page is, just so you understand, these, these little numbers on my left are my field numbers, and this is a calendar across the top, and this shows me what I did in each one of these fields going across... Uh, going across the summer. So this tells me, you know, IR means I irrigated, MT means we sprayed for mite, SW is swathing alfalfa, the green lines are alfalfa, the white lines are corn. Um, up there on top I got days off. You see the little off, off, so Rigo, Salvador, Butch, Gustavo, you know, these guys. That, so I can I can sit here and visually see what's happening really quick across the, uh, this is just something I use for planning and then I readjust it as I go along with the date. So, what's your view on no, I do. I do things on the iPad where you know if I have stuff um, that I want to change or if we're logging, I, I will put them in here. I, I just don't create spreadsheets. So if I got a spreadsheet where I want to change a couple numbers and, and see the outcome, like if you're like I have a thing I can't. I don't know if I could dig in here and find it, but I have a thing where I calibrate my my uh, my wheat my small grain drill, you know, and, we, and I got a thing where you plug in. Okay, how many acres did you plant? How many bags of seed did you put back in? And then it tells you how many pounds per acre you put out, and then how mu and how many notches to change the uh, the drill to try to get it closer. You know, so these are. You know, so we use that kind of stuff in the field. You know, and sometimes it's easier just to do the calculations if you know the math already in your head or the calculator. How do you print from your iPad? How do I print from my iPad? I don't. I print from my desktop because everything is cloud-based. So if I want to, uh, if I want to print any of this, I just open it up in the web browser on the desktop. But most. Um, most new printers, three minutes, most new printers have these uh, new Wi-Fi print modes where the iPad and the Androids and stuff will print directly to them. So like my mom's printer, for example, is new. I can go with my iPad and I can push a print button. Uh, I think I could do it right here from this. Um, yeah, you've got this print button right here on top, and uh, I can hit this, and then it asks me where I want to print it to, and then if I'm in her Wi-Fi system, her printer shows up. So there are ways of doing it. I just don't do it because it's you know everything's cloud. Yes. Putting a lot of stuff out on the internet. What about data security? <clears throat> well, the the um, uh, I don't. Well, I'll just put it this way. I don't know anybody who gives a crap about my data, for, first of all. So first, somebody has to know uh, what they're looking for. They have to know that I have it and they want it. And then they have to know how to crack uh, whatever security measures these companies that I'm using have to protect my data. So Dropbox you know, has this military-grade data encryption. Um, you know, it, it, it will stand up to almost any kind of what's called a brute force attack of, of trying to crack its encryption. Things like remember the milk and, you know, Evernote, you know, I mean, I'm not sure what their encryption is, but I don't give a crap. If somebody wants to, the, the easiest way for somebody to steal your information and 99.9% .9 of the time is because you give them your password or they see it written down somewhere um, or they guess it because you've made it too easy. So they already have to know uh, they want to get to it. And and so with that being said, I will, I will leave you real quick with a very, very brief idea of how to protect yourself uh, on the internet with passwords. Because I'm going to guess that all of you have probably the same password for every one of your uh, things, and it's probably your birthday, your kid's birthdays, your name, or something like let me in, one, two, three, four, or you know Mickey Mouse or something, right? These very obvious passwords. And so <clears throat> there are ways to set up passwords where you um, you set up a formula instead of a word, or you set up, uh, for example, I, 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 one of my formulas, I have many different formulas for passwords, allows me to have a different password for every website 
but I can remember it every time. And how this works is I pick two groups of two-digit numbers. So uh, let's say, for example, I pick uh, 1, 2, and 3, 4. Okay, so those are my two. 12 and 34. 1, 2, and 3, 4. I'm going to make an eight-digit password. So I go, there's, there's four right there with 1, 2, and 3, 4. So now I go to the website, and let's say the website is Google. I take the first four letters of Google, uh, G-O-O-G, and I put those in the middle. So I've got 1, 2, Goog, 3, 4. And then I'll take one of those one of those positions and make it capital. So let's say it's going to be the second letter. So it'll be 1, 2, G, capital O, small O, G, 3, 4. And that's my password now for that website. So now every... Every website has a different password. Sometimes I reverse, you know, you can reverse the number letters, but in Google is actually, what's that, onomatopoeia, same spelled backwards and forward. But the, the um, so you can, you can mix the letters up however you want, pick a capital in any position you want, but just remember what your formula is. Now you never have to write it down. As long as you know what your formula is and you can remember those two sets of numbers and you know how you've decided to do the, the, the URL, every website is different. If somebody happens to see you type in one, they're not going to guess that every other uh, one has a formula. And if, and if it requires you to put in an, a special character on the end of the whole thing, throw on an exclamation point or something, you know, and it does it. So that's that's a way that you can protect yourself. Stop writing down your passwords. Find a way to, to create passwords that you always remember, but they're different. Any other questions? Okay, I think we're done then. Who's your blog address? My blog, dinojacomazzi.com. Um, <clears throat> Dino, D-I-N-O. Let me see, I'll put it up here. Um, the... Uh, I also, the reason why I'm here, I guess, why I'm at this particular event is because I write for Dairy Today magazine. So uh, AgWeb, all of my articles for Dairy Today, which is owned by Farm Journal, appear on AgWeb. And so you can read articles that I write for them on there. But their website is so crappy, you can't search for it. I don't know uh, if there's anybody here on the web team at Farm Journal, we should have a talk because you can't, I can't even search and find my own stuff there. So you have to just poke around to find it. I also post them on my website, which is dinojacomazzi.com is uh, the website. And I have some stuff on here. There's, see, there's, a, there's, a, there's an article there on making strong passwords, uh, what I was just talking about. I actually recommend some other ways of doing it um, besides the formula I just told you, making uh, acronyms. You know, for example, my, my iTunes password is an acronym made from the expression, Miro, who is my son, does not get any more apps. So, there's a, so every time that five-year-old suckers me into spending another dollar buying him another app and I have to type in the password, I remind myself, Miro does not get any more apps, even though he always gets the apps that he wants. So this is uh, this is it. Anything else? You ever take a day off and things old fashioned way? <laughs> uh, you know, when you're on a dairy and on a farm, uh, almost half of what I do is the old-fashioned way. You know, I'm out there pulling cows out of the mud. Uh, I'm out there welding on stuff that breaks every day. I'm out uh, laying under tractors, uh, wrenching on things. You know, I get dirty every single day. And it's just uh, I don't like spending time sitting in my office. And so if I can uh, do... If I could spend more time at home with my kids or more time on the farm looking at cows and less time sitting in the office, and if this stuff allows me to do that, then that's, that's really the, the problem that I was trying to solve overall with you integrating this technology in my life is to allow me more time to do the things the old-fashioned way.